the ongoing fallout of the war in Israel. These are live pictures from the Gaza Strip. It is about uh, 7.30 in the morning there. We can see more plumes of smoke there this morning as the anticipation continues of a ground war to start any day now for local reaction to the developments out of Israel. Let's go live to Alex Rivkin. He's co-executive of the Executive Council of Australian Jewry. Alex, thanks for your time. Let me start by asking, how is the community, how is the Jewish community in Australia holding up right now? Well, we're wounded as a community. This is, without question, one of the toughest times in the history of our people, uh, without question. And uh, we're suffering, we're grieving at the moment, we're in shock. And we're also looking not only at what's happening in Israel, hoping for good news about the hostages and the eradication of Hamas, but we're also concerned about what's happening domestically. You know, we're seeing the horrific scenes on the steps of the Opera House. Uh, we're receiving threats all the time, and it's, uh, it's spooking this community. There's no doubt about that. Do you welcome the strong show of solidarity from governments, federal and state, both sides of politics, the major parties at least, their strong show of support for the Jewish community and for Israel itself? Absolutely. I mean, this is a time for leadership. And it began with the Prime Minister immediately after the attack, giving his unreserved support for Israel's right to defend itself and solidarity with it. And we've seen Chris Minns in New South Wales be absolutely exemplary in his leadership and his support for the Jewish community and the measures he's taken. And I believe that's across the board with the major parties around the country. So this is, as I said, a time for leadership, but not just at the political level, but it's a time for community leaders and religious leaders and leaders of families to tell the people that they can influence, that we do not import foreign hatreds into this country. We do not rally and march in the streets and call for the gassing of our fellow citizens. It's, it's imperative that these things happen right now. And with more rallies planned, there must be a sense of, of concern, of, of apprehension that, that, that those sorts of images and chants might be replicated, repeated over coming days, Alex. There, there is that concern, and there's a concern that whenever you have a mob together, knowing the mentality of the mob, and the Jewish people know this better than anyone, that anything can happen. And when you have this mob incited by a lot of their leaders, community and, and clerical leaders as well, uh, then really anything can happen. And you can have individuals peeling off from the mob and carrying out attacks as lone wolves. Um, there, there are many threats to the community. We're used to this. We're used to dealing with varied threats, um, we're used to dealing with incitement against us, but things have reached a fever pitch just now. One individual's already faced charges um, at the hands of New South Wales police after harassment, alleged harassment of uh, some teenagers at Bellevue Hill. Uh, are you pleased that the security agencies, the police, although maybe slow on the weekend in the face of that first rally, are at least now focused on what needs to be done? Well, I believe they've learned from their mistakes. There were clear failings with that initial rally. The fact that they were allowed to march from Town Hall to the Opera House, that should never have happened. But the steps that we've seen since announced by the, the Deputy Police Commissioner, the measures taken by the Premier, have been correct and have been of great comfort to the Jewish community at this time. And the arrest of that, that individual... Um, who was threatening to kill a couple of boys for simply hanging the flag of the State of Israel from their car. Again, it sends a strong message to the Jewish community that law enforcement is with us and is there to protect us. And it also sends a message to people like that perpetrator that their actions won't be tolerated in any civilised society. Uh, something I asked Jeremy Liebler earlier, and I, and I want to ask you the same thing, because while there have been pockets, um, examples of anti-Semitism and really appalling behaviour. The, the vast bulk of the Australian community, I think, right, are right behind you and your community right now, the Jewish community and the country and the state of Israel. Is that something you're also feeling? I hope that that is something that you and the Jewish community of this country also feel right now. Thank you, Kieran, for saying so. And yes, absolutely. And we're receiving hundreds of messages all the time from ordinary citizens. I'm being stopped in the street by people wanting to wish the Jewish community well. 
and this is a time when we need our supporters and this is a time that has really flushed out the civil and uncivil elements in our society and I'm pleased that the exceeding majority of our fellow Australians are good decent human beings who look at those scenes from Israel with absolute shock and horror and stand in complete solidarity with the Jewish community and I particularly want to mention the support yeah. we've received from the Ukrainian community these are people who are suffering immensely now they know what it means to face an unsparing brutal foe who cares nothing for human rights and yet they have the, the decency and the generosity of spirit to reach out to our community now and offer solidarity so I particularly want to acknowledge them but they've been community leaders and groups and individuals across the country that have offered support and it means so much to us, it really does. Evacuation flights begin tomorrow. Do you welcome that, that the government's got that happening with the support of the National Carrier Corners? Yeah, I mean, it's logistically very challenging, I'm sure. And there are so many nationalities that are caught up in this crisis. So many foreign nationals have been killed and abducted and have suffered uh, looking for loved ones. Uh, it, it's a global crisis as terrorism causes. Terrorism is not confined to a country's borders. It shatters our whole international system and our psyches. So I understand the logistical difficulties in addressing something like this at this time. Um, and I'm confident the government is doing everything possible to repatriate those people who want to come home. Alex Rifkin, appreciate your time at a very difficult time. Thanks so much, Chief Executive of the Council of Australian Jury, Thank you, Alex Rifkin there.